Amen. That's a great testimony of itself. We welcome Mr. David uh, for night three of the Bible. This is night three of preaching for him. So we welcome you, David. Please come and bless us this evening in God's will. Good evening. Good evening. Would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you so much, God, that we are chosen, not forsaken. We are who you say that we are, God, and we are so blessed and so thankful that we are your children, God. And for those, God, that are not yet children, God, who are still lost in the wilderness, or who have just been lost in the thick things, who have ran away, God, from your presence. Let them know, God, that you are with them, you are calling them, God. And I know that some will turn, some will repent, God, and turn their ways back to you, God. And I thank you so much. I thank you, Lord, that we are able to meet here this week, God, be able to meet together, God, and with whatever you have to say tonight, Lord, let it be for your glory and your glory alone. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to the third night. It's crazy how uh, I've preached, uh, preached my third sermon tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, when I go back home, I'll be able to say I have a lot more experience. <laughs> We talked so much about the just the sinners and the uh, idea of being lost or uh, just being lost in just whatever it is in the world. But tonight, in my opinion, this one that is so important and so overlooked in the world today because of the fact that there are so many out there that have not turned back. They have turned away from, from church, from believing, from God in general, just because of what the world has. So if you will turn with me to uh, Luke 15, 11, and I'll uh, begin. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, I uh, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the young son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out, uh, out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields and to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods with the, the, the pigs and ate, and no one gave him anything. Now I'm going to stop there for a moment. And as I mentioned a moment ago, there are so many just people who have turned away. I have a, I have a old friend of mine, uh, his name is uh, Eric. Uh, he was from my youth, and he was a good kid. He, he uh, came to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. I was one of his Sunday school teachers. I got to see him grow up and be a part of the church. It was a beautiful uh, thing to be able to witness. About a year ago, I went back home I, uh, from being in school, helped at a disciple now. I learned that weekend that he decided to stop going to church. He stopped because he didn't believe that it was his faith he didn't have faith, as he said, and it was one of the most heartbreaking moments uh, that I had because I've never had <coughs> someone who I've taught uh, say these words to me. And uh, I was convicted today at breakfast 
that um, I was, uh, I thought that I was allowing him to just uh, come back when when he needs to, but I know now, I, I believe that I need to reach out to him. Yeah, because sometimes, unlike the son who realizes that he's in a predicament, who, uh, after he runs away, they don't always see. And it is one of those things that uh, I see daily. I see this uh, on social media that I keep mentioning every single day, that I see people who went from being a, just a, Full fledged, just all in for the Lord. Uh, I, I could I could tell story after story, but the, uh, I will only tell one other story uh, of a, a friend of mine who grew up in the church, and she was influenced by the world. She uh, saw that it was so much better, I guess, so much easier to live in the world than it was in the church because of all the rules. She just wanted what was hers. She squandered, as Eric squandered. Uh, so many people have just taken what the Lord has given them and just wasted it on a life that ends in their last breath, not realizing the importance of the decision of their faith. If they had it, and to keep it, um, and to be able to stand there in front of um, in front of God and Him saying that you have been a good and faithful servant. Um, now, it is a challenge to me, and uh, I hope that it is a challenge that we're all willing to take after this week, after today, after tomorrow, any time you get a chance to go out and look for these people who are maybe squandering. Uh, the, the, the flight that I had on the way here, I mentioned this the first day, it was uh, a, an amazing flight. This, uh, the two women next to me, we talked about the Lord, we talked about just Christianity in general. But one of the things that I noticed was the fact that if the one next to me, the one that was kind of seesawing, not knowing what she believed, if she would have come into the church, would they have welcomed her in? She was, uh, uh, she had uh, a nose piercing. She looked different. I've seen so many people like this, and I've seen how they are, uh, how they are treated when they first come into the church, and that in itself is heartbreaking now. Touch that in the I can see the older brother. But if you would continue with me in verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as your hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fat of the calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For the son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. And uh, while we were singing uh, the last song, uh, I could not help but just think of the fact that we are chosen indeed. We are um, we are not prisoners anymore. But there are so many prisoners to Satan, to, to the sins of this world.
that who have fallen away, who have ran away from the from the spirit, from everything dealing with Christianity, because the world says it is a better place to live. And I and I, I just see this. I see the love of the Father. Uh, the Father who um, is obviously the Heavenly Father. But, uh, but for me, this is so much more than that because he shows the love of a father, an earthly father. A love that I uh, never had when I was younger. Uh, from my own uh, From my own father, and to see the the fact that he uh, it was in verse verse uh, twenty, he saw him a long way off, like his father saw him and ran to him. I uh, I remember hearing that men in this in that time frame dude, that had money that had these riches would not have ran, would not have embraced his son as he did, but Jesus was showing how much more love the Father in heaven has for us even when we run, even when we go as far away as from as another country, as to another area, that we think that we are so far from him, but he is waiting there patiently for us. And uh, I was trying to think of an idea, and I remembered, uh, I didn't walk away from the Lord, or uh, thankfully, uh, but I came back from, uh, just from, from school, from work, this last Christmas, and saw my mentor, the man who was like my father, and uh, he embraced me as he did. And he wanted to hear about everything that I was doing. And uh, he was proud of me. And when I see this type of father, I ask, are the men, like whether in this room or out there, are they welcoming their children? Are they, anytime their child makes a mistake, are they welcoming them back? Are they greeting them with open arms and saying, I will celebrate with you now. I'll celebrate that you are home because you were lost and now you're found. I, uh, I, I must say this uh, was one of the hardest sermons I uh, for that I've written to, to do because of that. Because of the, just the idea of the, the father figure, but the fact that the fact that Jesus uses the love of the Father in heaven through the love of the actual of, of an actual of a humanly father, and the fact that as I mentioned, he ran to him, he just embraced him is beautiful. Are we? Are we as believers embracing those who have come back or are wanting to come back? For those that um, have not yet come this week, have we invited them? Uh, have we been able to share with them the, the love and embracing them with open arms? But uh, this is the biggest challenge in this next section, starting with verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing, and he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe, safe and sound. But he was angry and he refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father.
Father, look, these many years I have served you. I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I may that I might celebrate with my friends. But when his when the son of yours came and had devoured your property with prostitutes in, you killed a fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It is fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive and was lost in his fact. I, uh, I was having a conversation before the service began and so many believers, so many people who are in the church today are like this older brother who hears the celebration of someone else and complains and argues with the Lord saying, why do they get all of this? Why do they have this when I have this over here? Uh, and I see everything that I have gone through this week going back to just the first two verses of this passage. The fact that the tax collector and sinners were drew near to listen. And the fact that the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled against them. And this is a question that I have asked and I will continue asking of each of us and myself every day. Are, am I grumbling? Are you grumbling? When, a, uh, when someone returns, when someone new comes into their church and they seem a bit different or they don't know what to do. Are we grumbling or are we welcoming them with open arms as the father did to his lost son? I am uh, I'm blessed to be able to uh, see such a community of believers such as yourselves that are just so loving and welcoming. When I first came in here, uh, Sunday, I was, I didn't know what to expect, but I am blessed every single day because of that. And I just hope and I pray that as we continue one more day left, that we will be able to find those who need Jesus, that we know who need to be in the presence of God. They may, be, may have been falling away, or they may have walked away themselves, but they need it. The world right now is such a dark place, and they have ran away because they got lost like the sheep, or they were lost in just the, the mix of everything like that coin, or they have ran away themselves just like the prodigal son. But one thing that is to also remember when we are looking at this is that the parable never finishes. It never mentions that the older son celebrates or the uh, younger son comes to the older son. Nothing like that. Because we already know how the Pharisees and the scribes uh, treated those who were lost. They treated them with hatred and they treated them with a grumble. And I ask that with tomorrow being the last day and tomorrow being the the end of the revival, will you go out and find just someone in the in the store and uh, the nearest Walmart uh, and wherever you go and welcome them and say, "Come to the church with me tonight." That is my challenge to you, and that is my challenge to me as I am out and about tomorrow. And uh, let us just praise the Lord every day because as we praise God, we should be all inspired to share with everyone we come into contact with. Amen. Yeah. If you pray with me, please. 
Lord, Father, God, thank you that we've been able to have this wonderful week together, God. We have one more day, one more day of revival, God, and I just pray that everyone will be able to find those who need you, Lord, that, uh, that just have been running away day after day, looking for a different truth, God, but God, you, you are the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus, and no one goes to the Father except to you. Thank you so much for everything you've given to us. And praise you in all that we say. In your name, amen.